she was so good. We're going to call the special call meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, November the 29th, 2006, at 8.07 a.m. Councilwoman Bell is present, Councilman Hodge, Vice Mayor Lozner, Councilwoman Wallman, Councilwoman Garner, and Councilman Porter. Our purpose this morning, the special call, was a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, providing for the removal of the City of the Council order that is authorized by the City Charter, Section 5.09. Subsection C, providing for an effective date. <coughs> for the last 30 years, I've been involved and engaged in audits at various colleges and universities and with the city homestead. And I'm very familiar with the auditing process and procedures. Our city has a history of meeting challenges and opportunities, heads on. Several years ago, this mayor called in Mr. Merch Thurheim and 25 other experts to deal with a financial condition that could have crippled the city if we did not publicly state that we had a problem and needed help. We are not in the business of hiding things, we are in the business of solving problems. And we have been very transparent and will continue to be so. This whole controversy of this internal auditor have been blown completely out of proportion been a very targeted audit report and it disturbed me that it kind of pointed to individuals in this order that was unfair and unjust. Mr. Rick Stout in particular who works for the manager and I want to repeat that Mr. Rick Stout worked for the city manager the city homestead and not the mayor and council. So the mayor and council can't fire Mr. Stouts because he doesn't report to us. So there's no need for people to state that he's being protected or we're trying to hide something. The draft audit is out there and we will do what we always do, develop a corrective action plan to make the CRE better and make the city better. There was no smoking gun in the audit, and the most important statement was the fact that the auditor found no misappropriation of funds, no misuse of funds, no cover-up or fraud when he looked at the CRA <coughs> department. And that is the reason why I primarily did not comment publicly about the draft report in order to allow Mr. Albritton time to finalize his report. I was extremely embarrassed to read comments from a few of you who took the liberty of making unwarranted, uns unsubstantiated comments about a draft report that was a work in progress. So we hear this morning, not to silence the messenger, but to evaluate the performance of the messenger and his ability to execute the duties, responsibilities, and the expectations of the Office of Internal Auditor. And my request to ask Mr. Arbritton to resign was based strictly on his performance and not politics. And I have concluded that Mr. Arbritton lacks the municipal auditing experience to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of the position of the internal auditor as reflected in our city charter. And the charter is very clear. The internal order the works at the will and the pleasure of the mayor and council. And it is evident to me that over the last three months, during Mr. Albritton's probationary period, that his work product and performance failed to meet my expectations 
as an internal auditor. My expectation as one of his seven supervisors. And as a result of that, on Monday the 20th, after an hour meeting with Mr. Albritton, I asked him to resign from his position as an internal auditor from the city homestead. Now let me be a little more specific as to the reason I asked Mr. Albritton to resign. Number one, making false and misleading statements in an audit report. Two, overstepping his authority as the internal auditor. Three, interfering in management decision making process. Four, failure to follow a direct order. Five, failure to communicate effectively and timely with the mayor and council. Six, failure to complete assignments in a timely manner. Seven, failure to follow proper protocol. Eight, lack of government auditing experience. Nine, lack of good, sound, professional judgment. Ten, using bully tactics towards staff to obtain information. Eleven, falsely identifying himself to citizens in the community to obtain information. And finally, creating an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. Those are the reasons why on Monday the 20th, I asked the internal order to resign. <coughs> now to ensure the public that we are not in the business of color, protecting individuals, or killing the messenger, I've asked Mr. Jerry Shioka from Rackland, Coin and Holtz accounting firm to review the report and to finalize the CRA audit report. I want to thank Mr. Albritton for his contributions to the City Homestead during his brief tenure, and I wish him well in his future endeavors. Now let me tell you all about this, this um, whole issue about this audit. The audit report, when I read it, and I read the first page of the audit report, and as I stated, you have been reading these audits over the last 30 years. When an auditor concludes, come to conclusion that someone should be terminated, and that person does not report to the auditor, it troubles me. <clears throat> At that point, I knew he had lost his objectivity in the findings and the execution of the internal audit. So that troubled me right from the very beginning. The first few words in the first paragraph in that audit, it troubles me. And I met with Mr. Albritton on many occasions, and we went findings by findings that I pointed out to him my concerns and many of them. The very first finding, when he alluded to the fact that we had a, an elected official that owned property in the CRA area and it violated the HERO board bylaws, Article 12 or Section 12 of the bylaws, which does not exist in the bylaws. There's no Article 12 in the current bylaws of a hero that would have put this elected official in violation of any rules or regulations of the hero board. So when I have a professional that would make those kind of errors in an audit report, it troubles me. Seriously. And as a mayor of the city of Homestead, it is my responsibility to look at the issue and call a spade a spade. And I've called it, I've asked for his resignation, and I hope that I get the support this morning from the council. Thank you all so very much. Um, <clears throat> as we always do, I'll go around the room and get comments from the other council members. Ms. Ms. Bell, we'll start with you, Ms. Bell. I almost don't know where to start. First of all, to compare an internal auditor with an auditor like Rackman and Cohen, who specifically is just target finances only, 
is like comparing apples and cantaloupes. You cannot compare the two. One is internal for internal controls. The other one just does the numbers, what's going on, what's balancing, you know. But an internal auditor's scope is completely, completely different. First of all, you know, I was waiting for what the explanation for the firing was. And I'm certainly not surprised at what I've heard. I think there was a tremendous amount of spin, if you will, on the statement. And I was waiting, because you're pretty good, Mayor, but there's a lot of spin on this one. False and misleading. Now, I will tell you, this man has been with us three months. To say failure to complete in a timely manner in three months just boggles the mind. No smoking gun, didn't comment publicly. This is, you know, target of the audit report. Now, a lot of it did focus on the CRA and Mr. Stotts, which is exactly why I think the mayor thinks he needs to go. And probably the majority of this council. This is not about personalities to me. This is not about Mr. Stotts. This is not about Mr. Albritton. It's not about personalities. If I like you and I still think you're doing something wrong, I'm going to say I still think you're doing something wrong even though I like you. Because it's not about personalities. And we have to be able to do that sitting up here on this council. We can't protect our friends, which is, I think, exactly what's going on here. I'm just going to call it like I see it. There's a lot of protectionism going on here right now, this morning, and it's been going on. When he uncovered things like, why is there a negotiation for a Main Street director who went from $40,000 to $60,000, and what justified that type of an increase? And I don't even want to discuss the wherewithal and the particulars of that particular job. But when he brings up things like that, that's very important to take a look at, because when we fund something, we have a fiscal responsibility to understand what we're funding and why we're funding it. And as a CRA board member, I am always hearing about things after the fact. That's just the way it is. When I read in the newspaper last holiday season that the CRA had pledged up to $50,000 for that holiday home makeover fiasco, I got to read about it in the paper before I got to vote on it as a CRA board member. That does merit looking into. Now, when this auditor comes in and asks those questions, they need to be asked. He doesn't need to be silenced. He needs to be encouraged. He was, and also the statement about he doesn't have the experience. Well, why wasn't that brought up when he was hired unanimously? Talk about experience. That also boggles my mind. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, you can put lipstick on a pig and call it a supermodel, but it's still a pig. And what we're trying to do here this morning is put lipstick on a pig. We want to get rid of a man for exposing stuff. And we want to stop him. This is my opinion. And this is the format for it. I believe we want to stop him before he discovers anything else. Never was a conspiracy theorist before I got elected. Guess I am now. When he first came in, within a matter of weeks, he saved the city, I think it was $2,000 to $3,000, simply in how we were renewing our license plates for fleet license plate renewal. Caught that immediately. And I'll say it right here. I went back into the building and planning department and saw a lot of things that I did not like. I saw a lot of stuff, walking back in there, meetings about looking at plans for EFBD school sites and going back in there. And I asked Mr. Albritton to take a look at the building department, building and planning department. I said, you may want to take a look back there. I see things that just don't seem right. So if you want to fault anybody for that, you can look directly at me. Which began a couple month process of establishing a uniform time card policy, putting a lot of controls, internal controls, which is what an internal auditor does, putting controls into place, policies and procedures in place in that particular department. Which resulted in, I think it was four firings, a couple of demotions, and properly so, and Ms. Kamali taking over the whole department. I went to that department and I asked, what do you think the auditor's findings and your implementation to Ms. Kamali? And I asked this question, what do you think that's saving the city in a year? And her response was about $300,000. 
in one year because of time card fraud, people punching in in and out other people, coming in after hours and punching the clock while they've been gone for hours. Things like that were going on. And we caught it. We caught it because Mr. Albritton was here. That's why you as the voters put on the ballot, we put on the ballot, and that's why you as the voters voted as a charter amendment that we wanted an internal auditor. For three years I've been sitting here and we've been trying to hire an internal auditor. In three months we want to fire one because he's doing his job. Don't be deceived folks, this is just simply a man who's doing his job. When he made a recommendation about the renewal of license plates, that was great, yay! He made a recommendation to do this and we did it. When he made a recommendation about the building and planning and building and zoning department, made a recommendation and was implemented by Ms. Kamali, yay! He made a good recommendation. When he made a recommendation concerning Mr. Stotts, oh, he's not allowed to make a recommendation. Now that draft, I want to make, sh make sure you understand it, that was internal. That was for council members only. Somebody leaked that draft, but it was internal. That was for us. It's not Mr. Albritton's fault that it was leaked to the media. It's not his fault. Why are we penalizing Mr. Albritton for what was leaked to the media? They won't say that that's part of the problem, but that's part of the problem. I have a lot of concerns, but I'm going to stop now and let other people speak because I'm sure we'll, we'll have time to come back as other people speak. But you can, you can call it what you want to call it. You can say you were dissatisfied with his three months on the job, <coughs> many other things. But I bet you in every one of those meetings that our council, different council members had meetings with Mr. Albritton, I bet you every one of those meetings had nothing to do with building and zoning department, the planning department or with the, uh, the license plate renewals. I bet it all had to do with the audit. So when we say there's a bunch of other things that we're concerned about, no, that's not true. And I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of questions that I want answered. Now I'm going to have to find those answers without the help of an internal auditor. Because I'm not getting those answers from, from certain department heads. And it's interesting now that Mr. Stotts works for the manager because when I had discussions with the manager the manager said he wasn't sure because since we're the CRA board he wasn't sure if he answered to him or he answered to us so I think this is a bit interesting that now he totally works for the manager when before there was some type of confusion so now Mr. Manager we know now we know A lot of passing the buck going on. This city needs to take a long, hard look at itself and at us sitting right here in this dais. We need to take a long look. This is nothing to me but silencing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Mr. Ms. Dodge? Thank you, Mayor. Personally, I, I, I take a personal look at the, the audit uh, for the simple reason of being chair of the CRA department. And um, I work uh, very close with Mr. Stouts. And when I was initially elected, I think Mr. Stouts had uh, been hired uh, several, several few months before I, I was elected. So both of us was uh, pretty much uh, new. Uh, to the city of Homestead and, and what, what has been done. And I can tell you, uh, before Mr. Stouts uh, was the CRA director, there was uh, very little community redevelopment that was taking place uh, in the CRA uh, community. Um, and one of the biggest issues that uh, Mr. Stouts and myself both had with the CRA dollars and, and how they were previously uh, being issued was um, issuing those dollars uh, to uh, programs and uh, it was something that had been established before the both of us had, had came along. Uh, it was uh, in contract, it was something that was already set in stone. So that was, that was something that um, we really just couldn't do, do a whole, whole lot about. Uh, there was 
Um, there's Art South that is funded. There's the Seminole Theater that is funded. There's Main Street that is funded. Um, and then there was um, uh, a couple other little uh, smaller programs. So those were the major ones that that were funded. And and we did have a we we both had a little bit of a, a issue with that. But as as time moved on and we realized the importance that those organizations uh, play uh, as our Main Street and as our downtown re revitalization as part of that program, we understood uh, part of the uh, mindset of the thinking in funding those. Uh, but the problem that was there before those, uh, before that time, uh, a lot of times when the CRA was initially established in the city of Homestead, uh, it was very little funding uh, that it was receiving in its tip dollars, so it wasn't a whole lot for it to do uh, anyways. And the majority of that money was going into a program funding. Uh, and Mr. Stotts, in, in the last uh, three years that I've been uh, uh, city council member, and Mr. Stotts has worked with CRA, has basically uh, developed uh, from uh, one to uh, one million dollar budget, basically to a six million dollar budget, uh, and is is grown pretty much that fast in the last couple of years. Uh, I think when I first was elected, it was like a one point three, one point four million dollar budget, and now it's a six million dollar budget total and whole. And I can tell you, a fraction of that uh, comes from uh, actual TIF dollars. A lot of that those dollars are are uh, created through um, different uh, entities for its rental properties and, and, and leases that the CRA has and is developed and he's, he's done a great job in, in developing, uh, putting infrastructure that do not have infrastructure and, and creating, creating an environment where, where development and, and movement is starting to take place. So. I took I took this very very personal uh, when it when I saw that uh, because of the fact that it was it was it was really disturbing and I know the, the great job that Mr. Stott has done and, and are doing. Also, looking at audits, um, the audit was not a financial audit. It, it was a, a personal tactic to me, um, and I felt like on a professional. <coughs> On a professional basis, uh, when an audit is being done, um, it should be uh, unbiased, and, and this one was is very much biased. And it also disturbed me that this particular audit was leaked to the media, and as uh, Mrs. Bell adhered to a little earlier, that there was an audit done on the, the Development Services Department. And there were there were findings, and there was not such uh, a media uh, outlet of that information uh, like like this information. As a matter of fact, the, even the report we received was was very limited in information uh, than on the one that, that this particular audit has has created and, and done. So it seems to me that it's more this information has been more targeted and, and projected. Uh, than just general information or general audit, and for, and for that for that reason, I support the mayor in, in his decision, and and I will stand and I will, and I will stand because it's just uh, it's just information that I think I think it should have been done a little bit better professionally. Um, some of the information should have been uh, legally uh, taken to our city attorneys before before. Released, um, I mean, it was just, it was just very, it was very, and and the mayor's professional enough not to uh, damage character, but it was really it was sloppy work, and and it it should have been a little bit more professional than that. And the auditor also works for uh, the city council as a whole, and not one particular council member, uh, and that effort, that. Uh, initial setup should have been uh, created where the information and the auditing should have been done based on a decision of the, of the council 
and not any particular one individual of the council, because it's something that should be done as a group because he does work for the group. So that's information that we should, the format just was all wrong, and I think it should have been professionally a lot better shaped than what took place. And it was really unfair information, and it was not really well checked into, and it definitely needed more investigation and more background work before publicly released. And that's why I back the mayor in his decision. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Wow, where do I start? There's so many jumping off places. I was quite taken aback and surprised by the mayor's rather lengthy laundry list or his parade of horribles against Mr. Albritton. I will share with you that my personal experience with Mr. Albritton has been very positive. I've had small questions that he has fully and promptly addressed with me as to various issues for policies, procedures, and processes, and various issues throughout the city. And certainly he came to us after an exhaustive search with what seemed to be stellar credentials and a really sterling work history. And I was heartened by the fact that he was making these inroads, that as Ms. Bell said, at council meeting after council meeting, we gave him accolades and heard positive activity of his work. So, you know, when I hear things like misrepresenting himself and unprofessional in that laundry list of horribles, I'm somewhat taken aback. And I will tell you that since the draft report was given to me by Mr. Albritton, and I have spent way too many hours thinking about it, talking with the manager and his staff about it, and having quite a few restless nights wrangling with this whole issue. And it was stated earlier that, well, Mr. Stouts works for Mr. Ivey. I can tell you that it's been quite a clear message sent to me that from among this council to Mr. Ivey, there is no direction, no sympathy whatsoever, really, for the manager to address any of the issues or to sit down and have a let's get a handle on this meeting with Mr. Stouts. So while it's certainly in the discretion of the manager, the manager takes his cue from the majority here. So don't kid yourself. You know, the manager knows who writes his paycheck and what kind of work atmosphere he wants to live in, because he can have a real good relationship with Seven. And, you know, I understand where Mr. Ivey is coming from. He lived through that in the police station. Every day he came to work wondering what roadblock would be thrown in his path or whether or not it would be his last day. So I don't really fault, you know, Mr. Ivey for his current hands-off position as to Mr. Stouts. I wish you all could see, you know what, it is personal. I wish you all could see Mr. Stouts' face. He looks like the cat that ate the canary up here, because we know the vote here this morning is a foregone conclusion. We all make mistakes. And I'm not certain that this mistake on its face merits the action that appears to be taken this morning to terminate the auditor. I was thinking that when I came to council in November of 2001, when I came here on the heels or at the end of a real financial crisis in our city, where this community was in financial shambles and its council and the community as a whole really had no credibility. And it really bothers me that I and my colleagues on present and past councils have worked hard to rebuild and restore this community and its credibility and its standing in South Florida. And I'm fearful that by taking this action today, in light of some of the lapses that have been pointed out in an audit about ethical practices, leadership practices, and 
just procedures in CRA that by sending this message out to the public, by terminating this auditor, that we're wiping out the credibility that this community has built for five years. That's the bottom line. When this starts getting into the local section, the front page section of the Herald, something is amiss. I share Ms. Bell's sentiments that it's not really about the auditor. It's about what he got too close to, or it's about what the majority of this council has in store for us through CRA in the future. I'm kind of aggravated with myself that I haven't been able to quite put my finger on it yet. But when I look at what's gone on through CRA, through the enrichment of the political benefactors of the majority of this council, and what I think is coming along, it's not about the professional credentials of the auditor. It's about protecting the current CRA director. And I hope, and if the manager is in fact the overseer of the director in that department, I think there's enough there in that audit that Mr. Ivey needs to take it upon himself to sit down. And I think it's pointed out that as a hero board, we need to get a handle on additional oversight. I mean, when I look at the sanitation of the records and the website of Main Street since all this has occurred, all of a sudden that website has really been fluffed up and modernized. Some of the stuff, I can tell you that on Saturday, November 5th, there didn't appear to be a board of directors. Didn't appear to be active at all. And the membership list was current as of 2004. And all these extraneous issues as a whole that have come about since this audit was released publicly, and the threats that have been made to me over contracting, and it's not about Ms. Knowles, and it's not about the need for a Main Street program. It's about policy, procedure, and process that Mr. Albritton, I believe, very adeptly pointed out that there's some real soft spots here. And we all know that probably sometime before 9, 930 this morning, we will not have the charter, a person in that charter mandated position. And I'm fearful that we'll have difficulty finding another auditor. And that the next auditor's hands will be somewhat tied as to where he or she can go. And again, yes, were mistakes made? Absolutely. But I don't know that it merits the termination. I mean, if we need to sit down and better clarify, I mean, I have the job description here that we all passed upon. And in my personal experience, our auditor met that position. I'm really, I'm discouraged and I'm disgusted by this whole process and the seemingly that there is not sympathy for the majority to take a further look at either the director or the department. And I have to share the sentiments of my colleague that it's about what is about to be found or what was almost found. And Mr. Albritton, for myself, as someone who's, before I ever held a seat on this council, I worked for this community. I don't need a seat to help build a better community. And I apologize for the allegations and the treatment that you have been afforded here this morning because that's not what my community is about. And I want to apologize on behalf of myself and those who share my sentiments and are interested in building a better and credible community. And I appreciate your prompt assistance and the conversations that we've shared just on general issues. A charter provision was passed four years ago and this is the first full-time auditor we've ever had. It was passed six years ago, right? 
in November of 02. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wallman. Ms. Mayor, thank you. I apologize for the cough drop in my mouth. I've been sick, so I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> Jim and I had a conversation the day after the audit came out. And I can't remember if that was at a council meeting or a council meeting that we were given the draft in our package. Do you recall, Jim? I think it was a council meeting. In our mail. Okay, well, we, we get our mail at, at our council, okay, our council meeting. Um, and, and Jim, you know, we had this conversation. I was quite concerned because I didn't understand why it was in a draft form. And I think I said to you that morning, you know, more than likely it's already out to the press. You know, well, I was quite concerned about that. Uh, so concerned that I even asked the city attorney as to um, whether your statue at the bottom um, that you that you had at the bottom of the draft, um, if in fact that was a private document, and I believe I'm not trying to speak for you, Richard, but I believe you said that it was a private document, and that but once it was leaked to the Miami Herald, um, then it became a public document. So so there there is a violation there. We don't know who leaked it, but somebody leaked it. Um, and that's neither here nor there at this point because the press has had a field day with this without ever asking me my opinion or I don't know about anybody else um, on the uh, council. Um, I told you at that time, Jim, that I, that I was upset that there weren't any responses to the draft and then you explained to me that um, uh, you had not had a conversation with Mr. Stotts at that time, correct? It was also mentioned that, um, I'm trying to do all this in, in a very professional way, but some days it's hard. Um, I've had a lot of criticism, very severe criticism regarding the memo that I wrote as management chair. And Jim, you know why I wrote that memo, don't you? Okay. And I'm going to tell you now why I wrote that memo. The main reason I wrote that memo was that Jim stated to me that he was fearful that certain council members would use his internal auditing position for political gain against other council members during the upcoming election. Is that not true, Jim? Now that disturbed me. That hurts deep to the core because that's not what an internal auditor's position is for. And it wasn't for lack of trying to find an internal auditor. We um, uh, we're absolutely, and Marcy, you're, you're here with me today, um, we have very few applications. And, and to be honest with you, Jim's the only internal auditor that we were able to interview because he did not, I mean, no one else had the, oh, we had two, two, I'm sorry. But the other one was some time back. Um, but Jim, when you were hired, it was made very clear that we, you did not have any governmental experience. You had corporate experience. Is that not true? Corporate and non-profit. And non-profit. Okay. I'm going to hold the rest of my comments until later, but um, I will say this, that I have talked to, I've spent the last week doing as much research as I could do and talked to many federal internal auditors, um, government internal auditors, and they all said to me that it's standard procedure that you work from your notes. You do not put anything in writing until you have your exit interview. You have an entrance and an exit interview with the department. Um, still don't quite understand that, Jim, why, why you put it in the draft form. You say that you wanted direction from council, but you could have called us. You know, that draft has just really... And to this day, have you had a chance to ask Mr. Stotts his responses? I know he put it in writing, but have you have you actually talked to him? Yes, 
Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. Should I not be hearing the question? Jim, I just think it's important that your comments are on the record and that they're heard by the audience. So if you're going to ask questions, I just have to ask. I'm sorry, but I haven't had an opportunity to talk to him. Will you state that again, please, ma'am? Yes. I ask you if you've had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Stotts and ask him why, you know, complaint number one or why conflict number two. Have you had a chance to do that? Mr. Stotts and I have talked, yes. We have not discussed the audit. The mayor of the interview asked me not to do any more on the audit until I heard back from him. Okay. And therefore, I did nothing else on the audit. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That answers my question there. Mayor, I'll pass for now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Ms. Warner. Thank you, Mayor. When we were looking for an internal auditor, we discussed at length what we wanted them to do. And one of the things we talked about was we were looking for efficiency. We were looking for someone who could work with the other departments, get along with other people within the departments, and learn how they did their job every day to make their job easier. I specifically talked to Mr. Albritton about development services, the fact that they work with code enforcement, the fact that code enforcement works with parks and recs and other departments. Say code enforcement has a problem, they need to talk to someone, there's a lot that needs to be mowed, there's a procedure. I was looking for him to help the departments work together in their procedures, if there were programs that they could use that could make their jobs easier. Those were things that I was looking for. And when I received the draft and the audit report of the time cards, I was very upset. First of all, for the time cards, he received an anonymous tip about the time cards. To me, that is not the job of the auditor. He reports to us, and he should be getting direction from us, not from an anonymous tip. That should have been turned in to the manager or to HR, because I believe HR was already working on that issue. I didn't like the way that that happened. I didn't believe that was proper procedure. When it came to the CRA audit, I was flabbergasted. How can you audit a department and not even speak to the director about it? Those of you who are out there and believe this original draft audit, I would like you to read Mr. Stott's response, because if you read through this, you will see that there's no, there's, all the information in the draft is ridiculous. If he had sat down and talked to Mr. Stott, he would have gotten an answer for all of his questions, and the draft would have been one page, which was the last page of the draft audit that explained the way they collect monies and that everything was okay in that department. And I understand why the mayor brought us here today. I have to say that I don't see, after the discussions with some of the city employees, I don't see how Mr. Albritton can go into any department and expect to be able to work with any of those people. They're looking over their shoulder thinking that they're going to be the next Mark. I don't believe that, we're not going to get anything done. He's going to be ineffective because people don't have any faith in him, and there's no point in having him anymore. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Garner. Mr. Porter. Thank you, Mayor. I've had, I've been here for, on the council for nine years, and we've had one instance where we basically had to remove an official directly under the leadership of the council, and it was a city manager. And the manager, although he did at that time a lot of things good, the one thing that broke the camel's back with me was when he bullied the employees. And without council taking into consideration someone misusing a position, whether it be a management position, an audit position, an attorney's position, those positions that fall directly under the council or the clerk's position, we are the only ones that can step in and basically take that position to task. So it's very difficult to balance all this out. I had the first meeting with the auditor, gave him basically my opinion about what I felt like the position should be, had no more meetings with him, and then everything that I asked or thought the position should be was not what the audit position ended up doing. It was a position that I thought we could use to help us get better, help us get more efficient, and it's basically been used to take us back a few steps. 
And I think that the position by itself is a good position. I just don't agree with the current employee's style or processes that they're using, that are being used. A lot of things have been said. I haven't been here for the last week or so. I don't know what's been printed in the media, the e-mails, the typical rhetoric that goes on. My position is I've lost confidence in the current employee in this position. Lost it a while back. When the employees come forward from all sectors of the employee's status hierarchy and complain as much as they did when we fired or had to dismiss our manager in 1998, I believe, and as has been the case currently with the audit position, is very troubling. And I think it's unfortunately a position that I have to say that I have no confidence in the direction that the auditor's position is going now and would really appreciate some sort of a change. And I stated a while back that I was not comfortable with the direction. It's basically based on the input that I've received from numerous employees, not management employees, but in addition to management employees, but employees just supervisors and lower. So, Mayor, I did receive a similar call from someone in the community that said that they had been contacted by the auditor and was basically never given proper information as to what the auditor was looking for, what the questions were all about, and that's a very disturbing position as well. So, unfortunately, I have no confidence in the current auditor and cannot support him staying in this position. And if someone knows that there's some sort of a cover-up or some – if anyone knows there's a cover-up, they should state it on the record because I've read through the responses. I've read the draft. The things that have been put in writing, I don't see a cover-up. I know, Mr. Manager, you've been looking at development services for a while. There were no changes made, to my knowledge, with the positions that were brought forward by the auditor. I believe those have been on the table for a good while. Am I correct or not? Because I know the replacement of the planner had been looked at for a while. Mr. Porter, in relationship to development services, we were working – I don't know what Jim was working other than the time card audits that he was doing, the procedures used in time cards, and I might not be privy to other type of investigation he may have been doing there. We were looking at our own set of circumstances there that turned out that we found some issues that we needed to correct, and we took that corrective action. So we were doing a parallel, I guess, or investigation, so to speak. But the point is that even though Mr. Albritton had an audit of his own, it was in addition to something that you were already doing. That's correct. What I knew was that it was mainly the time card in the process. I was looking at fraud, potential fraud, some other issues. I say fraud, time card cheating and time cheating and oversight, some inspection issues, and that's what we had handled. Okay. Okay. Well, I just put that information on the record. It's very difficult. I do remember when I was very young in this and we had to basically terminate a manager. It was a very difficult process, but it was also probably the appropriate process at the time, and only time will tell because it's very difficult to do this. But I have no more confidence in the gentleman. I do believe that the position is a good position, and we need to go at it and aggressively find someone to fill it, but I don't believe in the bully tactics that I've seen used or have been told have been used from the position at this particular point. So that's all I have to say, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Thank you very much. The case is submitted.
internal order disposition, I think the vice mayor alluded to it several years ago, after that financial condition, it was this mayor that led the charge of making sure that that position was part of the city charter to protect the city for now and into the future. And the voters overwhelmingly approved that initiative to have an internal auditor. Mr. Albritton is not our first internal auditor. Prior to Mr. Albritton coming aboard, we had a firm on board to conduct our internal audits. And as those audits come out, the manager responded with corrective actions. The same thing will apply to the CRA audit. Mr. Albritton has come out with five or six findings. The next phase of the report is the management response and corrective actions. So when I hear that there's a cover-up and people are upset because Mr. Albritton came up with findings, the findings are out there, it's public. The next step is, what are we going to do about it? Management response, Mr. Mr. Stout and his staff have responded to the findings, and I don't know whether the public have had an opportunity to, to read those responses, which should have been incorporated into the audit. And in addition to that, how are you going to resolve those findings? And that's where management comes in with the response. The reviews that Mr. Albritton have done thus far did exactly that. When he came up with the finding, management responded with, okay, we're going to correct that finding by implementing these policies and procedures. The same thing will apply to the CRA audit. There will be a management response and there will be corrective actions to make sure those findings does not happen again. Very transparent. That's what audit is all about. So there's no hidden agenda here. You all have read those findings, but you have not read management response to those findings, which is, which is in City Hall today. We have copies of the responses already, but you have not read the responses. Just assume because of the perception that something is so drastically wrong. And I think once you read the responses, you will see there's nothing drastically wrong. There have been a lot of misleading comments about the CRA audit. But the bottom line is, this is an evaluation of the performance of an employee that reports to the mayor and council. And each of us, you've heard, got a different opinion as to the evaluation of an employee that reports to us. And that's the bottom line. It's an evaluation. It's a performance review of a probationary employee. But the audit will be completed. And we will have responses, and I'm hoping we can make those responses public. So the community will know that we don't hide anything. We correct problems. We solve problems in the city homestead. And I, too, would like to apologize to the people whose names were mentioned in the audit. That's, that's, that was, that's unheard of in my experience at audit. You don't list people. You talk about the institutions, the corporations, the agencies, to protect the people working in departments and working in agencies. You say the city of Homestead failed to do this. The city of Homestead failed to do that, but you never personalize an audit report. And certainly as an auditor, you don't have the audacity to evaluate someone's performance. It doesn't report to you and say they should be fired. You don't do that. An auditor, that's not, that's not in the purview of an auditor. That's in the purview of management. Not in the purview of audits. I was very disturbed that it was personalized and not only people that works for the city, but people in the community was highlighted in his audit. That's un unheard of and unprofessional. You don't do that in an audit report. You list the institution, the agency, the corporation, but not the individual. And when you start doing that, you lose all credibility.
So I want to apologize to Mr. Stouts and Ms. Knowles and others that were highlighted in his report very unfairly <coughs> and very disturbing. And when I met with Mr. Albritton, behind closed doors, where personnel issues are discussed, and many of you that works on jobs and have people that report to you, you deal with personnel issues behind closed doors. You don't throw your dirty linens out in the community like this. And I tried to do that, Mr. Albright. Didn't respond to his audit publicly, because we will deal with it one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the way this process should work. But we're in a political environment here and people's lives at stakes and their credibility and their reputation. And we should always try and protect that. And in this case, we did not. We failed to do that as a result of the release of this draft audit. And it's unfair <coughs> and unfortunate. But I'm not going to sit you and accept anyone's statement that we're trying to hide anything. Mr. Stout was hired several years ago by the city manager, not the mayor and council. So we know who he reports to. And on the hero side, he reports to us. Well, let's be very clear, and let's be fair about this process, but uh, from the media and the few in the community that have blown this whole thing out of proportion, everybody reports to somebody. We report to the public, the internal order to report to the mayor and council. And yes, he will be evaluated, and the next one behind will be evaluated. Just like the manager is evaluated every year. The city attorney is evaluated every year by the man council, the city clerk, because those are the folks that report to us. And I'll make my own determination as to whether they're performing their jobs. That's my responsibility, just like each individual elected official will determine whether the manager, the attorney, or the city clerk, or the internal order is doing their job. We're required to do that. You can't help me with that. I have to make that own determination. Mayor. And to continue to hear this, you know, this, this silliness that we're trying to hide things after all that we've been through as a community. We've opened our books. The order is all over South Florida. And we continue to do that. We have a problem, we'll seek help. We're not afraid of criticism. And I'm certainly not afraid of someone coming forward and saying, you got a problem. My response is, how do we fix it? What's the solution? Help me find a solution to the problem. We want to do a good job. And if there's a problem in the CRA, we'll fix it. If there's a problem in, 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 in any department of the city homes, it is our job to find a solution to the problem. And not to hide it. You can't move forward as a, as a community and as a city if you're trying to hide something. There's nothing to hide. So let's just be fair and be, be straightforward with these issues. Mayor. Ms. Beth. Thank you. A lot of comments were made and I would like to address them. And one, one of the comments was that this is a personnel issue, uh, must be done one-on-one -on -one behind closed doors. No, that's not true because there's seven of us. There's not just one of us. <coughs> the auditor works for seven people. He doesn't just work for the mayor. He works for all of us. So according to the charter, according to how we operate, when we have a, something like this, it must be done in sunshine. It must be done openly in an open forum, especially when the auditor um, rejected the mayor's, um, you know, uh, resign or be fired. So I, I really take... Um, I really object to that because he doesn't just work for the mayor, he works for all of us. Councilman Hodge even alluded to that. He said he doesn't just work for one. Well, let me tell you, he works for seven individual people. But it's our job, and it's your job, and if we're supposed to be responsible council people who really deserve the fiscal trust of the community, if we see something wrong and we go to the auditor, that's what we should be doing. Not making apologies for doing it, or not saying it. And if that comes by the way of an anonymous tip, to say that getting an anonymous tip is wrong, or getting an anonymous tip is against procedure boggles my mind. I think my head's going to explode. 
explode. What more, if, if someone says, I'm seeing something wrong, but I don't want my name on it because I could be fired, that's called anonymous, and that's what an internal auditor is there for. One of the reasons he's there. So to say that that's against procedure or um, for efficiency and procedure make things better, that is the job of the auditor. Why don't we have an internal auditor for if he's not going to do that? I, like I said, I feel like my head's going to explode. Um, doesn't just work for one. He works for seven. If every one of us on this council sees something wrong or have been told by an employee or we see something ourselves, we have an obligation to see that that is investigated and looked into. Not turn our heads because it's somebody that we like or a pal in some department. Um, uh, it was said by Councilwoman Walden that uh, she talked to a federal auditor. I'd like the name of that federal auditor, and I'd like to talk to him myself. An entrance and an exit interview is usually done when somebody is hired and fired. It doesn't have to do with an audit, the audit itself. So I'd like to know what was the scope of that conversation, because that really uh, makes me a little bit curious as well. The fact that um, Mr. Albritton, she questioned him on whether it be, was going to be politicized. That's not the job of us. Things are politicized every day. Things are something you do, something you say, they're going to be politicized. It's not my job to say, are you worried or concerned because it's going to be political. Things are, this is a, this, we're po politicians. Things are going to get political. And the fact to say that you're concerned because something might be used at election time, everything's going to be used at election time. But I just, I don't understand, I don't understand that in, in the scope of this particular meeting this morning. Mr. Albritton, I also apologize to you. I apologize because everything I've known of you has been the opposite of bullying, has been the opposite of not being efficient, has been extremely efficient. You have been a gentleman <coughs> everywhere I've seen you, even when I saw you at the, um, for the, that one day on the conference, you were a gentleman in how you spoke. You, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, I apologize to you. Really, I, I, I'm appalled at this. Um, I think that maybe we don't get it, what an internal auditor's j job is to do. And to say that we're going to turn this over to Rackland and Cohen, it just, just, just purely crunch the numbers. This is not what an internal auditor does. That's part of what an internal auditor does. But it's controls. It's where we can be more efficient, where we're not being efficient enough, where we see problems. Why is this being done? Why isn't this being done? And what a coincidence. We've been looking into the development services all along, but it just happens to be that right after Mr. Albritton started looking into it, made a report, we had all of these changes enacted. We had firings. We had demotions. We have this great savings. We have all these internal controls. Place. Now we have a regimented time card system. Now we have a policy of how inspections are made so that when someone says they're inspecting um, a building or a house, it actually does get inspected and signed off. There's a lot of controls that are now being put into place that really weren't there before. What a coincidence that that just happened to coincide. But according to Mr. Porter and the manager, no, that's just, that's just a coincidence. I mean, you know, the, the no spin zone, well, you've entered the spin zone. And I hope that, that you're going to get some no spin from me and, and I'm sure from uh, one other councilman. I am appalled. And I'm ticked off. I'm really ticked off. This is not how we treat people. When we talk about being fair to the community, this is not fair to the community. The way we're treating this man is not fair. I am really, I am ticked off. I mean, I'm a little emotional because this is not how we do business in the city of Homestead. This is not my homestead. And when you have somebody who's doing their job, and he's only been on the job three months, he's probably saved the city a minimum of $300,000. And now we're going to show him the door because of an audit. Don't be deceived that we don't like because it points to people that we want to protect. That's the bottom line. And, and Mr. Stotts, I really probably, you have every right to be here, every right. I do think it's in poor taste that you are here, especially since a lot of this focus is on the CRA. I think it's in very poor taste that you're sitting here. Now, the fact is, one of the, one of the responses from Mr. Stotts is nobody has ever questioned his ethics in all these years. Well, I want you to know, when that shotgun house deal came before this council, and we were going to subsidize one person to the tune of over $300,000 to keep some um, little box houses empty, and at the end of the day we got nothing for our dollar, except some empty crack shacks, or I don't even know if they're empty anymore. We got nothing for our money, then the holiday home makeover, and then other things that, I've been, that have been quite questionable. And I want more, I want answers on those. I want answers on when we fund different non, not-for-profits, 
Where do we have input? Where do we not have input? Do we just fund it and shut up? What, what is it? So I'm very, I'm very concerned. I really am concerned. I want to know. I want answers. But to say that, that this is about something other than what it really is, don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. And I did question the ethics of those particular decisions, and I still do. It's not saying that I... It's, this is hard for me because this is, this is a town where you tend to like certain people and you can like the people in spite of what they do, but this is not about that. So when we talk about fairness for the community, when we talk about doing the right thing for the community, this isn't it. This isn't it. You, like I said, you can put lipstick on a pig and call it a supermodel, but it's still a pig. This is the, this is the pig. That's it, Mayor. Mr. Stiles. Mr. Stout, this is a public meeting. You have every right to be that. here as I said that. Any, have other, right. any other citizen. I said that. Mr. Hodge. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> no. to, to, to just address um, a couple of things from uh, Mrs. Bell's concern, the home makeover uh, basically was uh, an, an idea uh, that came about of some of my questioning and, and be honest with you, rehab, home rehabbing was not even in the original CRA's um, bylaws until it was rewritten uh, in 04. Uh, it was placed in there under, under my request. In other words, we, we, the CRA didn't even, even if we wanted to, didn't have the ability to create a re housing rehab program uh, within the CIA area. Uh, and that was an initiative that I had been talking to many individuals about. And uh, the developer uh, himself brought the idea uh, last year during a, a Christmas uh, time as, a, as, as an idea during the Christmas, uh, gave the developer a, a good PR. And based on that, it, it kind of initiated uh, our process into uh, looking for funding and, and uh, trying to budget uh, a full rehab program. And that's just something that, that we personally, I would like to see done and, and have done because uh, we know that uh, uh, we have the Southwest Master Plan and there will be some new development, but then there will be our, our elderly individuals that live on a fixed income. And even if we took them out of their old home and put them in a new home, uh, the taxes would put them out of our house. So um, being able to rehab their, their homes would, would help them keep their homes and, and upgrade them. Uh, and I know that has nothing to do with this meeting, but I just wanted to, since it, since it was brought up, you know, you know, talk about it a little bit. Uh, so that's that's where they, that, that program come come forth, and there's going to be a lot more of that, hopefully, uh, within the CRA. Um, and with the uh, shotgun houses, uh, it has been empty, and uh, the chief of police can tell you the service calls that was being received in that in that four acre area uh, was detrimental uh, to our. our Police um, department, and it has that three hundred thousand dollars has greatly reduced uh, crime, uh, drug infested area. Uh, that three hundred thousand dollars is is also uh, given us uh, the ability to spread our, our police department in other areas where, where they were needed because they don't get as you know the hundreds and hundreds of service calls to that area, you know every hour on the hour anymore. So we've, we've gotten a lot for, for our dollar. And uh, we also have uh, a, a quite a community in that area for, for that uh, particular dollar. And hopefully, uh, pretty soon, we'll have some new development coming in that, that particular area. Um, and just based on that uh, type of mindset, I, or I, I would say, um, looking at the fact that the audits and the information and, and how the information was coming together uh, to the audits and, and it goes to, in my eyes, job performance. And basically looking at the audits and, and a lot of the information and, and how the information was, was being placed and, and not to completely discredit Mr. 
Albright and, and his findings and, and, and his work and the things that he were, he were doing. But there were a lot of the information that, was, that were in the audits uh, were information that, that come from other individuals and, and not um, true uh, self-investigation. Uh, if, if you're going to internal audit, to me it's, a, it's, it's investigating the information. Uh, it's, in, it's a, investigation the numbers. Uh, it's in, investigation, investigating the, the processes. Uh, it's investigating the uh, in, entire uh, issue, uh, if you will. Uh, and, you would, and you do that uh, through self-investigation uh, and, and making the information that you're receiving credible and, and getting credible information. Um, I can tell you that the sky is green, but if you go outside and look and it's blue, but if, if, it, if, you put, if the auditors say, well, he says the sky is green, I'm going to write down the sky is green. And, and and consider that as an as an audit. I think I think that that kills um, uh, the the credibility of the information that that has been been written. And and, and I bring that analogy because of the fact that a lot of the information uh, has been brought to with uh, a lot of the information has been been brought to. To the, to the audits through uh, other individuals and, and not self-investigating uh, information that, that is sound and that, and that has information that can be uh, produced and, and given. And, and, and a lot of the information was, again, was already been in process. And I, I, I think that goes to job performance and, and those are the things that, that I personally look at this morning. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, ma'am. Look, I'm under no illusion that anything I say or have said this morning is going to change any individual vote or the outcome of the vote. But there have been suggestions here this morning that, that lead me to believe there's some real misunderstanding, respectfully, a misunderstanding at this table and among city employees as to the real role of an auditor and how an auditor does his job. And my view of the auditor comes from my limited experience in working in a bank during the summer times when I was in college and law school. You know, the auditor is not really here to be friends or get along with other staff. That chumminess or friendliness or getting along precludes the auditor from at least a perceptional basis from doing his job as the auditor needs to do it. The auditor is somewhat a sad and lonely animal over in the office by itself behind the locked door so that he can, without being painted as someone's friend or someone's enemy, go out and make that investigation. All right, there's been some talk about that maybe he failed to, to tell the person why he was asking particular questions. Well, you know, just like criminal investigations, audits need to be confidential and held as closely as possible until there is an outcome. And I think it would have been probably more inappropriate or would have been inappropriate for the auditor to go out to someone in the public, whoever those people may have been, and say to them, I'm investigating such and such and such and such. I need to talk to you about this so that, you know, the, the person, I, in my view, both public individuals and employees who may have been interviewed needed to have as little clue as possible as to where the auditor was trying to go or why he was trying to ferret out particular items of information. So I don't really call that bullying and I don't call that misleading. I just perceive it as part of doing his job. That's what an auditor is. You know, the, the lonely Maytag repairman over there toiling by himself or with a staff assistant. Um, it is, it's, it's a tough and, and unusual position and role that the, that the auditor plays. Um, 
and I think that for him to have the you know to to have the collegiality with others that that other city employees have with each other would taint perhaps the view of, of impartiality and he has to have from who from within and without city government he has to in fact have that not perception but in fact ability to know, for people to know that he's doing his job without without favoritism this morning's meeting is about whether or not we're going to retain or terminate our auditor who's still within his probationary period and clearly you know this is the this is going to be democracy at its best and its worst majority rules but you know they've also said there's the tyranny of the majority I tend to think of it in this room as the arrogance of the majority but the fact that we have spent so much time publicly talking about what's supposed to be a fire or retain issue that we've spent most of our time this morning hearing defenses of Mr. Stouts and others and justifying the crack shack subsidy and the home makeover PR scheme funded by the city of Homestead that tells me and I hate to say it but I don't think I'm too far off base with my perception that there's something else going on here we shouldn't in this context be talking about defending the director or any program of the city of Homestead and as I said earlier we all know what's going to happen today but I think that it's pointed out that this council as hero board needs to step back and look at policies and procedures and oversight further oversight of city money once it leaves CRA and goes out into into community projects. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Ms. Gowan, any, any other comments? Just one short comment. We, I'm not trying to defend anyone. If the auditor had done his job and spoken to everyone in the department, he would have gotten the full facts and the draft would have been different than what it was. I don't believe he did his job. I don't think he would be effective any longer. Any other comments, Mr. Porter? Well, just, just one, Mayor. Obviously, everybody, everyone up here is entitled to their opinion, and, and each, each of us uh, will live or die by those opinions. And I respect everyone's position. Um, you know, my vote was going to be, and still is going to be, that I have lost confidence in the position. Bottom line. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Do you want a motion on the resolution? Yes, you want to do, I'd like to move the resolution to terminate the... Uh, uh, second that motion. Moved by Mr. Porter, second by Mr. Hodge. Um, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> yes, sir. Are we going to hear from Ms. Yeah, I was going to say that I we think that would be appropriate, yes. first of all, to hear from Mr. Albritton. Yeah, that uh, was my next... First. Mr. Albritton? We always do that. We always do that. The Honorable Mayor Roscoe Warren, Deputy Mayor Steve Lossner, Council Women, Council Men, the City Manager, the City Attorney, the City Employees, and the City Citizens of Homestead. Today may be the end of the citizen's request to have an internal auditor that will have the desire to hunt and report to you about the improvement and controls that are needed to prevent Homestead from falling into the same conditions as other cities find themselves. The internal auditor position was open about, and I think we've had now more than a year, before I interviewed for the job, <coughs> which took about a month to complete with all of the interviews of the council. I thought the job represented many audit challenges, and I, can draw, and I could draw from my five years of experience that I had just completed with the nonprofit organization that also had not had a prior auditor on board. It was puzzling to me to read over the weekend that the mayor said his decision to pursue firing me had nothing to do with the audit. I thought that was the reason I was hired, was to do audits. 
During my two meetings with the mayor, he seemed to be most upset about my not reviewing the findings with the executive director of the CRA prior to distributing the draft report to the council. I explained that procedure in both of our meetings. Some, something as sensitive as conflict of interest, which hasn't talked very much about this morning, should not be first discussed with the auditee. I was looking for direction from this council on this particular issue. At the end of the first meeting, the mayor asked that I do nothing more until I heard back from him. When I heard back from him in the second meeting, he wanted me to resign. I can assure each of you that while the audit single departments that I always review the findings with the manager and ensure that employees are not given an incorrect answer based on their limited experience or responsibility, whether or not he would admit it now, the executive director of the CRA and I had lunch before I started the audit and we discussed that very joint responsibility of getting the facts correct. The city manager and I also sat down and hammered out the audit format that would include the quality improvement plan that would respond to any recommendations that I would make. That format concerns to the standards and would provide a complete response to any recommendation prior to the final report being issued to the council. You will find these responses recorded in the first two audits that I've already completed. I fully plan to follow that same format with a CRA audit when it was issued in final form. Since the Florida Chapter 119, and I admit that the attorney has said that once it went public that I no longer had that ability to protect that, the audit. I have to live with that. Only the final audit, though, should have been released as a public record, including a response from the city manager with input from the executive director of the CRA, who reports to the city manager. So what have my accomplishments? I think you've heard of some of them. I did three audits in three months. We had cost savings in the licensing of vehicles, which will occur every year, not just this year. Improvements over petty cash and police, get, police escort of employees making daily deposits in the bank. Improvements were made there as well. And according to staff, and I believe it's already been mentioned, that reduction of overtime and reorganization of the department saves the city something close to two to 300,000. So what I still have pending? An audit hotline for the third party vendor. So employees, vendors, or any of you residents could report any suspected fraud and remain anonymous. Getting a standard paragraph added to the contracts allowing the city audit rights for every contract we sign. Yes. Review audit, I'm also in doing an audit right now on the revenue audit of permits and licensing fees because of the issue we've already found in there in the past. And that home holiday home makeover is still in process. Uh, I have, should have one more little page. And, okay, here it is. The audit recipients during my progress report of the holiday home, I was asked, does the recipient have more than one piece of residential property? And the answer is yes. There's at least two. One of them appears to be it could be a rental, it could be family. I did not complete that work. The applications of the 14 participants had not been found, but the blank form did not request information on other assets, so that may not be an issue. Obviously, I should have spent more one-on-one -on -one time developing a better business relationship with the mayor and each council member. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, wow. I just came over here because we had one meeting that I spoke and you didn't open it up to the public. Are we required to have public comments? Well, this is an evaluation of an employee. At a previous public meeting, I didn't open it up to the 
levels, the public was always welcome to speak, to stand no. by the podium. And let me get, let me, let me, let me, let me, but this is a performance evaluation of a city employee. Even though we don't have the right, you could allow it, correct? We Mr. Attorney, right let, 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 let me get an opinion. I don't, I don't have a problem. Let me get an opinion. Public participation is not required. The council, if they uh, desire, could allow public participation. Mm -hmm. Really, it's up to the mayor and then subject to being overridden by the council. What's the wish of the council? I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I have no problem with public comment. Hold it to three minutes. Hold it to three minutes. Hold it to three minutes. I think it would take too long. Three minutes. Huh? I think it would take too long. There's only three people with their hands up. You're deciding on an issue that was voted in by the public. <coughs> You're going to vote the same anyways. But at least what's the pleasure of the council? Fine. That's fine. Just mm -hmm. hold it to three minutes. Yes. I'm on the shot clock. Yes. I'm going to give you a minute, a minute to comment, okay? Clear, clear by something, Mayor. Mr. Porter. Let's, let's clarify something. The position, the auditor, the position of the auditor is not being removed. The, the position still is intact. That is correct. Okay. We will hire another turn order. All right, thank you. Turn on. Angel of the Road, 2214 Northeast 41st Avenue. I'm glad the CRA was taking a look at right away because I did notice in the budget it has the biggest single increase for the year. It had a 68% increase, so I'm glad you took a look at that right away. Also, the message you're going to be sending, if it took you three years to hire an auditor, imagine now who's going to apply to the city of Homestead to be an auditor when he's not going to be able to do his job. If you do the wrong job, you're going to get fired. So it's very obvious we're never going to see another city auditor. And if he does come in, he already knows the the rules to follow and he's not going to really be able to do his job so theoretically you're removing the citizens eyes on the community you, you I mean on the uh, on the uh, on the on the city um, you also mentioned about the uh, the employees having their eyes you know the, the his eyes on their back all the time well that, that's our eyes that he's this the citizens eyes on people's back yeah I don't want it to get along with them when I was a, a supervisor within my company most of the people didn't like me why because I was the one finding all the improprieties and all the uh, improper action. So, yes, we want him to be our eyes on top of everybody's back, making sure that everybody's got their uh, T's crossed and I's um, dotted. And uh, worst case scenario, I would let him at least finish off the CRA, not hand it over to someone else to, 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 to wrap things up in a nice little neat package. Fire him, but allow him to finish the CRA and you have nothing to lose. If there's nothing to hide, why, why this big rush? Also, the city, the city has not demonstrated that type of intolerance to other, in other areas. For example, Redland uh, contract has cost you millions of dollars. You continue to work with them. This is maybe a couple of mistakes here and there. Employees all have mistakes. I'm sure even the city manager, we all made mistakes. You work through them. You give them better guidance, which is what he wants, and you allow him to move forward. And, and do his job and as a citizen I think we need him and I think it's inappropriate uh, to have him fired. I'd also like to get some input on the recommendation of the city manager. He hasn't spoken on this issue. Thank you. <laughs> Brian Judge, 260 Northeast 10th Street. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak, Mayor. Um, I, I noted that at the uh, charter review meetings, when we discussed the position of the auditor, he was universally praised, or his position was universally praised by the whole council. No one, no one, you know, everybody was happy with him, which makes it seem to me that it's not that they're unhappy with him, it's that they're unhappy with his current line of inquiry, all right? Um, <coughs> Now, Mayor, I heard you speak of there being no cover-up, but then almost in the same breath, you mentioned how so many different things should be done behind closed doors. You know, that, that just uh, confuses me a little bit. All right, I'd like to recommend that the Mayor and Council retain our auditor and let him finish his job and um, give full weight to his current recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, John Burgess, 655 Southeast 30th Drive. I'm a little baffled here today. I also hold the description that was posted online, and I can't find too many things that he's gone out of line with. It says right here, he will have free and unrestricted access, access to city, government, employees, officials, records, and reports, and where appropriate, require all branches, departments, officials of the city government to provide 
oral and written reports and to produce documents. It says he also provides reports to the city council as required as to progress, audit findings, and recommendations. He did that, and you guys talk about a leak. Has anybody here, I'm not the most computer savvy person in the world, in fact, I don't know anything about him. But the leak came from our clerk. When you look at the title of the email that was sent out, it goes to every council member and the Miami Herald. There's your leak, folks. Nothing's been done about that. That's an embarrassment to me as a citizen that nobody else could even find that with all the people we have. And then when you go back and look at Judy Waldman's letter that was sent out again to council members as a notice, the Miami Herald is posted again. So there is your leak. Boy, isn't that hard to find. Anyway, if the mayor has nothing to hide, then let's call the governor's office and get one of his auditors to come down here and give us a hand and get this taken care of in a prompt and timely manner. And I also think that there's a lot more to be dug up here than is being led on to. And I think you're cutting the messenger's head off. Thank you very much. I'm Jim Tramp from 2375 Southeast Seventh Place. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us speak. We appreciate that. This morning in the Herald, if you did not read the editorial section yet, Ethics Commission needs more punch. This is the lead editorial and talks about the appearance of wrong and it harms us as much as the actual wrong itself. And this is so true. And this is why you have 50 people in this room this morning at 8 o'clock because it's the appearance of wrong. And this, this council, you see, has not been without blame in the past, and that's why we're also here. When we find people on the council that are buying lingerie with a, a, a credit card from the city or trying to sell toilet paper to the, to the uh, city when they're on our council, you know, it does raise suspicions. And these people are still on this council right today. And so, of course, we're suspect. And that's why we are here. I haven't written or spoken to this issue yet, but I will because I did not have all the information. And now I have the information I need, at least about firing this man before he's finished with his audit. I've been audited 30 times in 30 years with internal auditors from Dade County Schools, and none of them are my friends, believe me. I don't sit down in the room with them until they have to say to me, by the way, this audit isn't complete yet. This is your draft audit, by the way. This audit isn't complete, but I'd like some information, more information to help me understand why you did this, why you made the deposits to the bank this way, or why you have time cards set up this way and that way. I'm audited all the time, and the auditor is not my friend, and he's not supposed to be my friend. He's supposed to be there to do an audit. And he should be allowed to finish this audit. And then, if he needs to be fired, Mr. Mayor, you all can fire him. Thank you. My name is Larry Caves. I live at 2870 Southeast 7th Place. And much time as we wasted here this morning, we all could have had some lawnmowers out here mowing out here on 8th Street and 152nd Avenue, going out to the racetrack. And when you ride around Homestead, this is a nasty town. With all the garbage laying around, the chickens running around the road. I don't know what's going on in the department, but it's not good. And I respect every person up here on this committee, but I think a lot of the people on this committee has already made up their mind about firing Mr. Albritton here. I think he's doing a fine job. And even though he might have stepped on some toes, I think you need to reconsider your votes this morning and vote no not to terminate him and keep him on as uh, our city auditor. Uh, the future of this city depends on his actions. I know we had a lot of, uh, during the votes, when uh, they mailed out all these shiny uh, uh, flyers to 
Uh, they might have spent about a half a million dollars on that. I don't know what the outcome was on it, but uh, I imagine it was four hundred thousand dollars or better. Y'all would the city might have spent on that. I mean that's a waste of money too. So, but anyway, I asked the city council to reconsider their actions here and keep Mr. Albritton on as the city auditor. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, City Council. My name is Angel Lazo, 1400 Southeast 23rd Drive. I'm here this morning at um, 8 o'clock in the morning. I took off some time from work to come here to this very inconveniently scheduled uh, City Council meeting. I think that uh, if there isn't a cover-up, there's an appearance of it by scheduling this meeting when it's most inconvenient for the citizens to come out and see such an important event because you hired an auditor to you know, review the finances and the procedures, the checks and balances, and then they're not able to, they're not afforded the chance to come and see that you're firing him for something, for doing his job. I think she should retain him. I think history will absolve Mr. Alberton. And I think that the next auditor is going to have his hands completely tied because he's going to be so afraid that he's going to get fired because he's not singing Kumbaya with, the, with everybody in, in staff. I mean, that is ridiculous for, to even think that you're trying to befriend the people you're trying to investigate. The possibility of having people arrested it was, is very high with an auditor. How can you think that you're going to let him know that, you know, if you're getting reviewed, why would, you, why would I let you know that, I'm, that you're possibly going to be arrested? It's totally boggles the mind. You're completely right, Linda. And uh, that's just my opinion. I really, you know, there's a lot of people that I spoke to who thought that they wanted to come here and just said 8 o'clock, impossible. No way. Can't do it. Most people have to go to work. They're not allowed time off. It's just not possible. So in... And just take advice that you need to schedule these meetings for the convenience of the people, not the convenience of your schedule. Thank you. Kevin Sullivan, 1860 Southeast 6th Court, Homestead. I'm here today speaking as a homeowner. I'm not representing any other organization or entity. I had promised my wife that I wasn't going to even speak today. However, because it's so conveniently scheduled and not on TV, if everybody will not tell her, I'm going to go ahead and talk. <laughs> I came here with an open mind. I read some wonderful articles by Mike Dill and Rebecca in the Herald. I read the editorial from the editor in the Herald, but I still came here with an open mind because I thought we were going to discuss, or I was going to listen to you people discuss a job performance. I did not think I was going to sit here and listen to the inadequate performances or the defense of inadequate performances of other people. For one, I have never met the auditor I saw him stand up here for the first time, and I'd like to personally say I wish to thank you, and I must apologize to you for what I consider is a raw deal. Anybody that's ever had an order to work, time cards, oh my God. I had the misfortune or fortune in my previous careers of working in a machine shop. We worked for government work. <laughs> auditor came in and he pulled all our time cards. We didn't know what the heck was going on. We found out the auditor wasn't our friend. But I'll tell you this, I saw nobody punching anybody else's time cards after that. So uh, I guess he was doing his job. He was sent in by the government, by the way, because we were using, we were doing federally funded mechanical apparatus. So to close here today, I see the time clock stops, so that maybe is good. Um, I just think that I can read the votes up here, but if you're really interested in doing good for the city of Homestead and us as the taxpayers, you will think long and hard before you send out this message that we're going to shoot down the messenger and not listen to 
to his message. Thank you all very much for your comments. Mayor, can I make a couple more comments, please? Jim, be, be, be very short. Go ahead. I would like to say that uh, in response to some of the issues that's been up here, uh, the article of bylaws that the mayor indicated that I had the wrong set, he's perfectly right. I did have the wrong set. I had requested the bylaws from the city clerk, and she could not find the current set. So that's why Mr. Stouts included the, the, the right set in his article. There is still some comment about conflict of interest, but not the way I presented it. I also did, to, to work with each of these uh, council members, I went to each of them and asked them, told them we, because of uh, uh, Mrs., uh, I'm sorry, uh, Waltman's, Judy's uh, letter, that we were going to have a workshop. And so I asked each of them to be thinking about it, even before she finally wrote the, the item, that we know what kind of audits that they wanted me to do. Now the time card audit, I don't believe it's completely fair because the, the city manager and I worked very closely in working that audit. It was not two separate audits going simultaneously. That's right. We worked together to come to those conclusions and I believe the city manager could confirm that to you. I also just re-looked at my draft. I did not see the first name mentioned in that draft as the mayor indicated, is my always to protect the individuals. Yes, if you use titles, people can figure it out, but you have to make some reference to who it is you're talking about. And in reference to Jeff's comment about dealing with third party people, yes, I did go out and make a phone call to <coughs> confirm with the lady who was in the incubator but had resigned and taken her back home. And I owe her an apology if the way I conducted myself was not right in her behalf. And I had meant to call her, but so far I have not done that. And I apologize for that. But what I was looking for was a third party confirmation of a date. And auditors do that all the time. Go to third party people to confirm, to be sure the facts are right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jim. Mayor, can I make one last comment? Just to, I'll make it really brief. I know I need to go. I just want to clear the fact because I noticed that you keep bringing up the, the conflict of interest issue. So for the paper, for everybody, I said don't come up anywhere else. I'll go ahead and take care of that right now and, and make it as public as, as possible. The conflict of interest and using the bylaws um, um, that was that was read made a conflict of interest of me owning a, a second property in the CIA area. Uh, in community redevelopment that I inherited. Uh, I had no choice. My grandmother passed away in 2004, uh, and I ended up with, with the, the home that, that is there. Um, and so he looked at that as being a, a conflict of interest of having that. I also live in the CRA, uh, so, but there's nothing in the bylaws of that, of that, of that uh, legislation that has anything to do with creating a conflict of interest. Uh, conflicts of interest, and, and that being the case, and in the in the draft report, it said I inherited the property in September. When, in, in fact, again, you, it's public public information. You can go to MiamiDade.gov and, and look up the the deed change, and it, it the deed change was actually done in May and not September, and that's how I know the information uh, that he received was not. Uh, the correct information because my grandmother passed away in June and we did the deed change in, in May. Um, all, I added my name to the deed in May. Uh, the, the refinance, because my grandmother had a mortgage on the property, which is still a mortgage on the property, which I've had it refinanced a second second time since then. So if, just for public record, everybody's know, just go ahead and air out air, everything here. Uh, the first, the first um, mortgage that that was done was done in September, All right? So that that information is is where he may have gotten the September number, and, but the deed my name added to the deed was actually done in May, and my grandmother died.
passed away in June. Okay? So if there's any conflict of interest of gaining a house because your parents pass away, maybe so or maybe not so. But I just wanted to, you know, put that out there so, you know, there's no secrecy there. And that information should, again, it's public information. And if the investigation was done properly, and it's public record, you go to Miami-Dade, you probably could have called the property appraiser of Miami-Dade and find out when the actual deed was done. And you would find my name was actually added in May and my grandmother passed in June, so I didn't inherit it in September. And that's the type of inaccuracy that this draft had, and that's the problem that I have with it. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Lozman? No. Councilwoman Bell? No. Councilwoman Garner? Yes. Councilman Hodge? Yes. Councilman Porter? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Mayor Warren? Yes. Motion carries. Being disadjourned.